Hey everybody, it's me, Joe. Hey, I'm here at Nerds for a Cause. It's the Comic-Con, formerly known as Aericon. I'm here this week promoting Dilly, or this weekend I should say, I'm here promoting Dilly. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys around, show you what's inside. Uh, my friend Spencer Stoner, along with the Fraternal Order of Eagles, they put this on every year. This is the fourth year I've been doing it from its debut, from when they did it their inaugural year back three years ago, four years ago, I should say. So you guys, come on in, I'm gonna show you the booth, and then I'm gonna take you around. Now I'm gonna show you my booth right here. And there it is, there's my booth for Dilly. Got my books, got some stickers, magnet, my glasses and my phone are there, just ignore that. Got my computer up, I'm gonna have to reboot so people can see an episode of Dilly on there. And these are complimentary with Officer Blaze. So I'm selling these magnets for a dollar, stickers for 50 cents, and my books for five dollars. So, and then over here is my neighbor, and she's doing a drawing of this little girl right here that I sketched, and she's filling it in. She's drawing the, the Hello Kitty on there and the dress and everything, and I did the outline sketch of it. And uh, how do you like it so far? Is it is this kind of exciting to see you being drawn in cartoon form? Yeah. So it's like a like a modern day caricature. Yeah. yeah. Picking all the colors for me. Oh, good, good. Well, it looks great. Can't, I bet your parents are gonna love it. <laughs> well, we'll just keep moving along here. And then over here is the augmented reality, and the people from Snafu are here. So, what kind of augmented reality are we doing here? A magic leap. A magic leap. Uh-huh. And they do uh, some very interesting programs, including a robot shooter that there's not enough room for in here, and a program where you can see jellyfish swimming around. Oh, that sounds awesome. I'll have to check it out here in a little bit. Alright. Alright, I'll I'll be back. Thank you. Okay, so now we're back over here. And this gentleman has some really awesome stuff that he makes himself, a lot of crystal and... That's, that's an outright lie, sir. I don't make anything. My art is talking. This is my wife's art. So oh, my okay. My wife makes all of the art you see here. Uh, what we do, though, is we go out, we scavenge, and we, we look for things that are cool and odd. Um, unfortunately, what it causes me to do is I have five boxes of rocks I moved the last time I moved, and none of those rocks are here. Those are my wife's personal rocks. Um, but these are the rocks that she decided to part with. The rocks we find that are pretty that we love, but not quite pretty enough to make it into a collection. And then also things we salvage, like uh, the two taxidermy head, the pronghorn, and a mule deer. Uh, those oh, yeah. We also have vertebrates, we have paws, we have bits, we have jewelry. Things all over there. It's a lot of fun. And how's it, how's it been going this weekend so far? So, this weekend's been a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie, I've been pulled between multiple places. I know my wife had a lot of fun here yesterday. Um, I was running a wrestling event. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but it's it's been a lot of fun. The other thing we do is if you're a vendor or if you're a creator, like I said, this is my art. This is the art I do. Uh, this is my wife's art. So if it is something where, like, you like how the banner looks, you like how our cards look, we're a part of Basement. If you need art done or if you need a banner design or you need card design, we'll trade with you. We don't... Like I was telling other people, I'm not I'm one of the only non-cash-based businesses here. I'm just as happy to trade random things with you as I am to take some art. Oh. Well, that's that's awesome. Your wife does some fantastic work. She does. And my fiance was here looking at it yesterday. It just really just floors me the talent and all the diverse art that's here this weekend. Just is just just blows my mind. Yeah, and we're, we're here because of Spencer. Uh, he's the author and one of the main people in the Eagle that was putting it on. I know Tina's taking over for now as president, but we're here because we love that man and he's a great guy. So feel free to check out his work. Come on, don't, don't be a bad man here for me. <laughs> Well, hey, it was great talking with you, and you guys, best of luck on this. Have a good one, guys. You too. And over here, I was talking to this gentleman earlier, and this is one of the coolest collections I've seen here, and I'm going to let him tell you about the train and what he does and your name. Hello, I'm Dylan Chen from Dylan Chen Studios, and uh, this is uh, my collection of anime postcards. 
And also here, this is one of my prize magnets. This is uh, my Cato Union Pacific 8.4, which is built by 8.4. The real engine is a Cheyenne. This is a model built in Japan. Cato is a Japanese company. And they built also not just the engines, they're coaching the tracks. Uh, the postcards here are from old uh, anime promotion postcards from back in the day, if you know anything about uh, anime. These are from anime you've probably seen or haven't seen before. Uh, this is a, a quarter of the collection. I have a lot at home. Uh, I have more models of this engine, uh, engines like this one here that are at home right now. Some are also built in Japan, some are built, some are from America. Um, and the good thing about this, the details of this engine here is very pronounced. You see the rivets, you see the crank pins, you can see the oh, yeah. retip. Mm -hmm. And you know, and something that uh, people will automatically assume is Union Pacific was not specifically in the United States, but people associate it with being just in the United States. So knowing that these trains came from Japan is something a lot of people don't know. So this is something that really is enlightening to a lot of people. The railroad is in America. The railroad is in America still exists today. The model is built in Japan. Oh, okay. The model. Okay. The railroad still exists to this day, still offering a senior certain program. So you might see this engine actually in real life coming through your town. Oh wow. That is something. And Dylan, thank you for your time. And and best of luck with your today and hope you make a lot of sales. I'm this display, I'm not selling. Oh you're not selling? Oh okay. Spencer might be display uh Oh okay, well good. Well Best of luck. I hope a lot of people come over and are, it's drawn attention. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, oh, you too. And now over here, this guy was on the panel with me yesterday. We were doing the author panel, and I'm going to let him tell a little bit about himself and his comic. I think you guys are going to really enjoy what he's going to tell you about his comic and everything. And just tell everybody your name and what you, what it, the name of your comic is and what it is you do. Sure. Uh, my name is Stephen Yu. I am a comic book artist and writer and illustrator. Uh, so everything here is martial arts, action, western inspired. Uh, the highlight of my table is my Joan comic. Uh, and it's basically Joan of Arc as a medieval martial arts western hero. And uh, it's just my love of martial arts movies and, and talk about action flicks and westerns. And it's all just kind of put together in this duck press known as uh, Joe. So, yeah, and so that's a main one. And how can people, if they're really interested in wanting to acquire, because I know you have one of your comics over here, if I'm going to just put the camera over here. And this is your first issue of... Origins. This is episode one. Oh, and okay. So that comic actually is uh, done by my friend Nate. Oh, and, okay. Uh, that's his comic, but I did the cover for it, so it's a variant. Oh, wow. That looks great. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. He knew I love doing martial arts and I love animals, so he's like, do my characters. So, <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. So now if people, like, I'm going to show them, like, some of the stuff here, like this Logan with Jubilee and Tank Girl that you drew. So now, if people are interested in your art, how can they get a hold of you? What's the best way they can reach out with you and how they can... Uh, I'm highly active on Instagram. My Instagram account is S-Y-U-R-I-O-N. All right, I'm just going to put that camera on there in a minute so if people are seeing this, they can write it down if they're interested and... All right. Okay, well, there it is, you guys. If you want to reach out to Stephen, if you're interested in purchasing some of his work, there's the email. It's right there. And um, like I said, him and I were on the artist panel yesterday, and it was a great panel, great discussion, really enlightening on how each of us had a different way of how we convey a message, how we go about approaching our comics and things like that. And I found that really interesting, exciting, and it was just really enjoyable to hear how that all comes about because as I was saying, people have a different way of conveying it and there really is no right or wrong way of doing it. 
It's just what works best for you. Yeah. Steven, thank you for your time. Hey, you bet. And over here real quickly, this gentleman was also on the artist panel with us yesterday. If you want to just tell everybody your name and what you do. I'm Stephen H. Provo. I'm an author of fiction and nonfiction. I've got uh, several horror books here, some uh, science fiction, some fantasy. I also write my own histories. Uh, my wife, Sharon, is also a co-writer, co-author with me on a couple of the uh, horror, horror story collections that we've done. And how long have you been doing this for now? been doing it for um, about 10 years. I have. She's new this year. And uh, I've been a writer since I got into journalism back in 1986, so it's quite a while. Wow, that is something. And you were sitting on the artist panel with Stephen and I yesterday. And so, and your approach on it too, I found real interesting as well on how your message you get out and how each one of us had a different way of conveying a message or how we go about getting our stories out whether we do thumbnails or writing it like how I my approach and your guys's approach and so I found that really interesting because I didn't realize like with me some of the stuff I'll do like on the seat of my pants right. just comes to my brain and I put it out and others will really just plan it out and you have kind of a combination of both and real quickly just how how is that thought process work and how you approach that I get a basic idea of a story, and then I start writing it. I want it to have to be organic and flow, and the characters to evolve themselves, um, rather than me having this really strict outline. So I have a very, very basic idea of where the story is going to go, and sometimes it goes in a slightly different direction, and sometimes it takes um, on some new approaches along the way. It always gets where it's supposed to go. But if I think of some things along the way that I'd like to incorporate into uh, foreshadowing earlier in the story, I just go back and incorporate them at the point where I'm writing them. So it's, it's just a, it's a real organ organic process, and it always comes out really interesting because I get to know the characters rather than <laughs> forcing them into a box. Right. Well, that is, that is a really great way of approaching it. And Stephen, thank you for your time. You guys, best of luck. How's everything going over here? Awesome. Guys, you guys have a good one. Yeah, you guys take care. And now the man who is putting this event on, who I've known for about four years now, is Mr. Spencer Stoner. And Spencer himself is also an author. And Spencer, this is the fourth year in doing this. And each year it's just growing a little bit more. So how have you seen this, how have you seen this evolve? Well, we've got a lot more awesome people coming coming every year after year, and uh, now we're at, actually added some events. We had the, the Rick panel with you and the other authors, authors here, and then we had the uh, Reno Video Game Symphony or Orchestra Jazz Band perform, so we're getting more events to, get, to, to, to kind of perform here as well, and just doing really good things to help support Solace Tree. And, and, uh, and, 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 and I wanted to add to that, Spencer, that a lot of people that Solace Tree is mostly in Nevada, correct? Uh, yeah, mostly, yeah. There, there are people who come from all over to come here. Yeah. And for people that don't know who Sol what Solace Tree is, could you go ahead and give them a little tidbit of information on what Solace Tree does and who they are? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Solace Tree is a really great organization that uh, <laughs> provides uh, food counseling for, for children and, and families that have lost loved ones and are going through the grieving process and I've seen firsthand how much the, how much help that their their work does and it's just a great organization I really want to help flourish and help as many people as possible. Yeah, and Spencer, for me to be part of this is great too because it really is a good cause and you know people really need to know that because losing a loved one is is rough. You know, my daughter losing her mom, and it was rough. And just I've seen it with kids. And, you know, there's kids that are 10, 11, 12 years old losing a parent or both, or even losing a sibling. It's it's rough. And so these are good to be around other people who lost it as well. And it's a great cause. And, you know, I definitely want people to know more about this and get this out there. So, Spencer, thank you for that. And you guys are doing a fantastic job you and the fraternal order of eagles who are putting this on with you you guys are co what how would you say that co oh, it's definitely through the fraternal order of eagles 
I'm a member. So, uh, so we use the, the, the power of the organization of the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Uh, they're a nonprofit as well, and, and our entire goal is to help raise money for local charities to help to help other people. And in fact, that's the motto of uh, of the Fraternal Order of Eagles: is people helping people. So. Oh, well, Spencer, that's great. And before I let you go, I want to shift gears a little bit here and talk about your novels you've written. And I'm going to show those over here. And uh, this one here, Divine Intervention, I have that one and read it and really enjoyed it. Oh, I'm glad. And now your other ones here, Ophelia and Dead Meat and all these, um, and Divine Intervention, if you could just tell us a little bit about them and what it's about. Well, uh, it's referred to as the uh, Ophelia Legacy. They focus on a lot of character, conveniently enough, named Ophelia. She's mm -hmm. a, a mercenary in a fantasy world. And these are her adventures through that world of Honua, where she and her, uh, fr and her groups of friends that, that she meets throughout the, the stories, including her uh, best friend, Dia Nupumpi, who is a bunny barbarian, uh, they, they face uh, gigantic saber-toothed rabbits, uh, undead wizards, demons, genies. I mean, they, they go all over the place. Literally to hell and back, and uh, one heck of an adventure. Boy, it sure sounds like it. And are we going to be expecting more? Could, should, can we? I should say, can we expect more in the future? More novels? Yeah, definitely. I have a sequel to Divine Intervention I'm working on, uh, and and also the next novel in the Ophelia Legacy series is going to be called Ophelia and the Rabbits of War. <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you haven't seen the last of the and your friends yet. Oh, that's awesome. Spencer, thank you for your time and thank you for what you're doing here. Thank you very much. So that's just some of what's going on here and some of the vendors and creators who are here today. So I just wanted to give you guys a little tidbit of that. I'm going to get back inside, get back to my booth. But you guys, it's at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. If you are in the Reno area, it is in rooms A3 and A4. And it's going to be going on until 5 p.m. today. And it's at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. This is Nerds for a Cause, formerly known as Aericon, and it's put on by the Fraternal Order of Eagles. I'm Joe Briery. I'm the creator of Dilly. I'm going to get back to my booth now. You guys have a good one. Hope to see you here. Peace.